for anyone not familiar, what is The Winds of Winter? Well, obviously it's a book. It's a book within the series for that matter, written by George R. R. Martin. This series was adapted into television under the name of A Game of Thrones with huge success. The show, airing from 2011 to 2019, elevated George R. R. Martin and A Game of Thrones into household names. I think we all know how the show ends, but the books are not the show. They are quite different, actually. And today, we'll get to the bottom of it. To begin, this video will contain major spoilers for the books. I will be covering the entire storyline that has happened until now, and if you haven't read the books yet, stop watching right now, read the books. They are really incredible. That being said, I hope you enjoy. So, to start at the beginning. The year was 1996 and George R. R. Martin released the first book of A Song of Ice and Fire. It was called A Game of Thrones and it released with reasonable success. It was nominated for 5 awards and it won 3 of them. The book contained 8 POV characters, uh, Eddard Stark, Catelyn Stark, Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, Bran Stark, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister and Daenerys Targaryen. The first season of Game of Thrones copies the first book almost perfectly. Eddard Stark dies, Rob is winning the war, Jon Snow kills some whites, and Daenerys just got her dragon. Two years later, in 1998, the next book was released. It's interesting that the book itself claims to be released in 1999, which means everyone bought who bought it at release would have been time travelers. Quite cool if you ask me. Uh, Clash of Kings was nominated for three awards and it won two. The book itself contains 9 POV characters, Catelyn Stark, Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, Brad Stark, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, Theon Greyjoy and Davos Seaworth. Here the divergences start, though mostly with timing and not with actual events. By the end of the book, Jon has joined the Wildlings and the Fist of the First Man is about to fall. Red Lee is murdered and Stannis loses the Battle of the Blackwater. The Ironborn control half the North and Ramsay Bolton burns Winterfell. Rob is winning each battle, yes, yet he's losing the war. And in the East, Daenerys is doing her Karth things. Then, in a new millennia, a new book. On August 8th, 2000, A Storm of Swords is released. Same as the first book, it was nominated for five awards and once again won three. The book contained 10 POV characters, Catelyn Stark, Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, Bran Stark, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, Jaime Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, Theon Greyjoy, and Davos Seaworth. Jaime loses his hands, Arya heads towards Bravos, Rob Stark kinda dies, Catelyn kinda dies, she gets revived though, Joffrey kinda dies, which leads to Oberyn kinda dying, and Tywin kinda dying, and Tyrion flees to Essos. Mostly the same as in the series, except that the Taisha reveal, but that's another video for another time. Lysa kinda dies, Jerr kinda dies, another kinda dies, Ygrette uh, kinda dies, and Daenerys does her slavish bay things and becomes Queen of Marine. Jon Snow becomes Lord Commander of the Night's Watch and sends Sam to Old Town. As you can see, the summaries are getting longer and longer as the story gets more and more complicated. Oh, and yes, things are still mostly the same. It's 2005 and A Feast for Crows is released. The first actual New York Times bestseller. Qua Awards it got 4 nominations, 0 wins. Personally my least favorite books, but that's my opinion. This time we have 12 POV characters, Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, Jaime Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Asha Greyjoy, Aaron Greyjoy, Victorian Greyjoy, Brienne of Tarth, Samuel Tarly, Arya Hota, Aris Oakhart and Arianne Martell. This book really separates it from the show, as some of these names are probably unfamiliar to you. I think we all know most of them, but like Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, Jaime Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Brienne of Tarth, and Samuel Tarly. But the rest? Well, Asha Greyjoy is the book version of Yara Greyjoy. Aaron Greyjoy is this guy, a prophet for the Drowned God. Victorian Greyjoy is a brother of Balon and Euron Greyjoy, more a fighter than anything else. Euron is, well, actually really terrifying in the books, not this joke. Then Arya Martell is this chick, though in the book she is a lot more interesting. Aris Okard is one of the Kingsguard and he's sent to protect Mesela, the princess, in Dawn. Arya Hota is a Martell soldier, extremely loyal to Dora Martell. Oh, and um, if you were asking, yes, these characters are actually really interesting. The show just messes up real bad when it comes to Dorne and the Iron Isles. At least that's my opinion. Then comes the fifth book, A Dance with Dragons, released on July the 12th, 2011. It became a number one international bestseller, quite the achievement, and it was nominated for three awards and won one. 
It contained a whopping 16 POV characters. Arya Stark, Bran Stark, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Jaime Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, Barris and Stormy, Theon Greyjoy, Victorian Greyjoy, Asher Greyjoy, Davos Seaworth, Lady Melisandre, Arya Hota, Quentin Martell, and John Connington. So yeah, the political situation just got a lot more complicated. You probably know most of these, but for the non-attentive watchers, this is Lady Melisandre and this is Barris and Somi. Then there are two unknown characters left on this list, John Conn and Quentin Martell. Quentin Martell is the brother of Ariane Martell and the son of Kudoran Martell. He goes on this weird quest and then maybe dies. A pretty pointless character, all things considered. John Connington is a soldier who accompanies young Griff, who claims to be Aegon Targaryen. His story is just as complicated as it is awesome. So, um, what actually happens in these books? Well, a lot, and I'll get to it. But first, the sixth book, The Winds of Winter. With an original release date of 2014, everyone was hyped to read it. Until, of course, it didn't release in 2014. Nor in 2015 nor 2016, 2017, 2018, 19, and from what we know it probably won't release in 2020 or 2021. So people have been waiting for a while, and more on this book later. The seventh book is probably going to be A Dream of Spring, and it will be the finale of the entire series. Quite fitting, actually. Seven books for the story of the Seven Kingdoms. But it, there are actually nine kingdoms in Westeros, so Maybe there could be nine books? Probably not, but I'm just throwing it out there. Of course, this book is far from getting released, and a lot of fans here will never see it. I hope I might be able to make a difference with that, but who knows? Times change, and that is far in our future. And unlike in stories like A Song of Ice and Fire, our future is not so predictable. So, um, what actually happens in these last two release books? Well, a lot. Too much, actually. So, let's do a lightning round. Cersei, terrible leader, accused Marjorie, gets imprisoned, walk of shame. Brienne does her things in Rivenlands, gets captured. Jaime does things in Rivenlands, gets captured. Littlefinger does Littlefinger things with sons in the Vale. Euron becomes king, raids the Reach, and sends his brother Victarion to Daenerys. Ariane tries to make Missyla queen, but fails and Aris Hokart dies. Bravos Swan starts his journey with Arya Hota to take revenge. Sam comes to Old Town, Arya trains in Bravos, Bran goes beyond the wall and trains with Bloodraven. Jon does Jon things with Stannis and the Wildlings and gets stabbed. Stannis marches south, captures Arya Greyjoy, and maybe possibly dies on his way to Winterfell. Theon escapes Winterfell. Davos Seaworth meets White Man Manderley and travels to Skagos to save Rickon Stark. Tyrion travels to Essos and meeting Young Griff, John Connington and Jorah Mormont before getting enslaved and joining the Second Sons. Young Griff and John Connington travel to Westeros to start conquering the place. Daenerys tries to rule Marine, but it goes sour and she flies off. Bryson Selwyn performs a coup and Marine gets sieged. Quentin Martell releases through the dragons and maybe possibly dies. Wow, that was a lot. Obviously, that is to be expected when you have 22 different POV characters, but still. To be honest, I don't expect you followed all that. The political situation is extremely complicated at the start of the Winds of Winter, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time explaining everything that has led up to this point in our story. That is the entire point of the lore part of my channel. Now, to compare this to the show, I'd say we're somewhere in Season 5. Of course, the story is fundamentally different by now, but it's just to give you an idea of roughly where we are. Now, of course, because there are no books for the rights to copy for those last seasons, the writers had to make up their own stuff. These were, as we all know, the worst seasons of Game of Thrones, and that is mostly because the writing was absolutely terrible. I'm sure we could sit here all day complaining about the writing in these last seasons, but when we're talking about the Winds of Winter and George R. R. Martin, they don't really matter. As they say, the show is just another bad fanfiction of the books, and I stand by that. I am 100% sure that the ending of the books will be fundamentally different from the show, and the biggest reason for that is the POVs. It is no wonder that it has taken George R. R. Martin so incredibly long to write The Winds of Winter. Depending on how you count, and assuming that no new POV characters are added, it contains 21 POVs. That would mean that the average chapters per character will be less than 4. I am counting Jon Snow and Quentin Martell as POV characters here, because I expect them to be alive to some degree. If they're not, ignore them. 
Now, out of these 21 POV characters, I expect the following 9 characters have a 90% or higher chance of survival. No one is truly safe, but it would be really weird if one of these dies. Out of the following 12 characters, I expect the following 6 have a 70% or higher chance of death. The other six are wild cards. I really don't know what's going to happen to them, at least at this point in time. Now you probably won't agree with this list, and over time I might get convinced, or I might convince you. We will see. Now, if this list is correct, that would mean that we would still have, say, 15 POV characters at the end of the line. That is a lot. So even at the ends of the Winds of Winter, we are going to have around 15 plot lines playing at once. Because why would you have two POV characters on the same plot line if you might as well have had one POV character? This is a book, not the show. And the point of view is it is actually matters. To me, that is also what makes it feel Game of Thrones. There are a lot of plot lines happening at once, each influencing one another, which all lead to unexpected conclusions. Take the War of the Five Kings, for example. At its start, it seemed completely impossible that the Lannisters would win, and yet they did, because all these plot lines happened to turn to their favor. Another advantage of having so many plot lines is that there are no clear bad guys and no clear good guys. It's just a lot of players doing their own thing within the Game of Thrones. It's not good versus evil, it's not Daenerys versus Cersei, it's just a lot of characters doing what they believe is right. Because that was the problem I had with the show. It was pretty much an entire story written from one POV, Tyrion, and with all the other plot lines stopped actually mattering. Take King's Landing for example, Cersei burned the center of a religious movement and everyone should have been starving. These are the people that should have been rioting and yet King's Landing stays quiet. Why? Because the writer didn't care about all those other plot lines. They didn't care about the Tyrells and the Faith Militants. They didn't care about the Dornish or the Freys or the Brother Without Banners or Fagon. They just killed them off and striped them off their list. They didn't care about all the micro within the story. They only cared about the big parts that kept them their job. And if you ignore all the complex characters and the complex plot lines and everything that makes Game of Thrones Game of Thrones, if you strip away all the parts that makes it feel human, then all that is left is an empty husk. This is what I want to avoid at all costs. I want to create a satisfying ending to the story. I want to create an actually logically sound ending to the story. I want to create an ending that thematically fits with the story and not this, whatever this is. So that is what I'm going to try to do. I am going to try to write a fanfiction of the Winds of Winter, and I'm going to try to write a story that includes all these complex characters and these complex plot lines. A story that actually cares about character motivations and story. A story where that actually cares about logic. A story where it feels like anyone can die at any second. A story that feels like Game of Thrones. Now, of course, because I'm not going to be actually writing The Winds of Winter, I'm leaving that to George R. R. Martin if that's okay with you, because the actual book has probably taken a lot more time than I'm ever going to be able to put in mine. But to show that I'm not actually writing The Winds of Winter itself, I'm going to be calling my book O oh, Wind of Winter. It's super creative, I know, but it was the best I could come up with, and let's be honest, it might change, but this is what I'm calling it for now. So, to summarize, whenever I'm talking about The Winds of Winter, I'm actually talking about the actual book George R. R. Martin is going to write, and when I'm talking about O oh, Wind of Winter, I am talking about the book I myself am writing. The Winds of Winter or Winds of Winter is the sixth book within the story of A Song of Ice and Fire. And I hope I've really made this clear. The books are not the show. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to see the other introductory videos explaining other parts of my channel, click on these links on screen. If you enjoyed this, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this video, feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.